Why is the Holy See engaged in international life? The reasons that prompt the Holy See to actively participate in the daily struggles of the human family are neither economic nor related to the military nor political. Pope John Paul II gave an answer when he told the various diplomatic missions participating in his installation as pontiff. There can be no true human progress, no durable peace, without a courageous, loyal, disinterested search of a growing cooperation and unity among the peoples. For this reason, the Church encourages every initiative that can be undertaken, every step that can be realized, both on a bilateral and multilateral level. He added that respect for the fundamental demands of the human person is required. Christians are more attentive to this vocation of men and women, to cooperation and to unity because of the plan of salvation. The gospel message reveals to them that Jesus of Nazareth died together into one the dispersed children of God. The church, in the same way, is convinced to be able to contribute effectively to this work of reconstruction of the human family and of its history, thanks to evangelical love. It is for this reason also that the Holy See establishes relations with each of your governments and takes part in the activity of international organizations. <coughs> well, this, this line has been considered a consistent has been has been a consistent line of thinking since the beginning of the Holy See's involvement with international organizations, especially in the during the 20th century. It is developed fully in landmark documents like Pacem Interis and the Vatican Council II Constitution Gaudium and Space, and in the subsequent social encyclical of Pope John Paul the, Pope Paul the Sixth, John Paul the Second, and the latest one by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. I have discovered in, in these years that I have been actively engaged in Geneva that there is a, the possibility of a common language. The list of resolution of the UN Human Rights Council, established in 2006, offers a panorama of the sensibilities of the international community. After the crimes and horrors of the Second World War, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted by the UN in 1948, gave rise to several institutions and international treaties, including the UN Commission on Human Rights, of which the present council is the successor. The defense and respect of the human person was set at the center of concern. At present, one observes increasing efforts to change a bit the content and meaning of the words used so far in conventions and declarations. This probably is due to the pressure from some trends in Western public culture. In its intervention throughout the UN system and in intergovernmental bodies, the Holy See upholds the original ideals of the UN Charter and the Universal Declaration and consistently points out the four pillars on which the social order should rest. These were formulated as follows by Pope John XXIII. Nations are the subjects of reciprocal rights and duties. Their relationships, therefore, must likewise be harmonized in accordance with the dictates of truth, justice, willing cooperation, and freedom. The same law of nature that governs the life and conduct of individuals must also regulate the relations of political communities with one another. Exactly because of this attention without distinction to the rights of every human person, the Holy See, through its active participation in the regular and special sessions of the Human Rights Council, for example, 
argues on the basis of natural ethic and of the reason common to all of us. It does so on behalf of all categories of people in need of protection because of their minority status or prejudices of history. Thus, the subject of the interventions of the report on the part of the permanent observers of the Holy See often include such urgent themes as the integrity of the family as basic unit of society and the situation of, and special needs of women, children, migrants, and refugees. These categories of people constantly should be kept before the eyes of the international community. This is obvious for the evidence of available United Nations data. Just to take the case of children, the world still tolerates today the 200,000 child soldiers, some as young as eight years, are exploited in arms country. The 10 million children are, 10 million children are victims of today's sex industry. An estimated 250 million children are engaged in child labor, with nearly 70% of them working in hazardous, hazardous conditions. And 3.2 million children are under 15 years of age, are living with HIV, and only a small number of them have access to life-saving antiretroviral medication. So, there are vulnerable groups in society, and, the, and they become the priority of concern on the part of the presence of the Holy See in the international context. Another topic I don't want to, to talk too much, but another important topic is freedom of religion. And uh, this is part of the current, for example, the current uh, session of the Human Rights Council and probably next Friday I will, I have already prepared an intervention on the relationship between freedom of expression, and, which is a basic right, and uh, how the freedom of expression protects freedom of religion, and how we should avoid going into the direction proposed by the Organization of the Islamic Conference, which is about a group of about 60 countries that act as a block within the, within the council to protect religion as a religion by arguing that defamation of religion should, not, should, should be protected by some special treaty or something, which will be a disaster for Catholic minorities and Christian minorities in Muslim countries. So th these are current issues that are being being debated. 